Today we're going to get the laser source installed and test it out and then we're going to build the doors and the upper part of the enclosure and some other random stuff. Let's go! I bought this little step down converter um, to convert my 240 volts down to 120 um, so I could plug in my mini PC and monitor right here and not have to run a separate extension cord. Not sure where I'm going to put this yet so I left the cable a little long so I'm just gonna have it set right here for now. I still need to order my hoses for the water lines. So let's get this water chiller opened up so we can see what size hoses we need to get. Check out how much smaller this unit is compared to my old one. Man, I like that um, in my cramped shop space. So I don't think I've explained it yet in this video series, but my power situation is kind of odd. Um, what I have in my garage workshop is I have three separate 240 volt lines here and they're all 20 amps each. So that makes my wiring um, a little more complicated than it needs to be. So basically I run the motors and controller off of one of the lines. My chiller um, goes on a separate line and the laser source itself goes on another line. So um, what I need to do, I have a couple plugs here. I need to wire one of these up to the chiller and one up to the laser source. Cool, let's do the uh, chiller. All right, cool. I think I'm about ready to start getting the laser source hooked up here. So let me get the optical cable out of here. There it goes. I just realized I did something stupid. I have this spring steel support here and I attached it to the motor. Um, but the head is moving independent of that. So I need to actually attach it to the laser head itself. I've reworked it. Now I have the spring steel coming up and attaching to the front of the laser head. And I've zip tied everything so the optical cable runs right underneath it the whole time. And it looks like it's gonna work pretty well like this when I jogged off our corners. It's gonna act a little differently back here because when I have the back panel on it, you know, it'll be pressing this up. Um, it's going to poke a little higher through my roof. We'll feed it right through this hard stop that I made. Something like that. With that now sorted, I can get this panel back on here. I exposed my cooling hoses again here. Now that I have the optical cable installed, I forgot I need to route the water through here and out and then back down. So let me modify this. Here we go. All right, now I need to cut another short piece of tube to run there. Okay, that's better. I think everything's finally done up here on the laser head. I can get these panels installed now. Uh, I've got some drop-in T-nuts on here. Those are all attached. I'm ready to hook up the laser source. And just like when I was trying to hook up the laser source to my Ruida controller on the other machine, this one, also has the wiring diagram and it's obviously incorrect again. So I'm uh, going through and figuring out how I'm gonna wire this up. The laser source came with the cable here, so let me get that plugged in. Everything's clearly labeled here. Not sure what the best way to route this cable is gonna be yet. I'm gonna start hooking these up and see where they go. Oh, 
got it plugged into power. And I found the key and it powers on. Um, red light goes to active. I believe the machine comes encrypted. So I think I need to get the Mac software installed and take a look at how what I need to do to get it decrypted before I can use it. All right, I'm on the Max Photonics website here. Uh, download center, maybe? All right, I believe we need these two. All right, I'll let that finish downloading, then we'll get it installed. From what I understand, we can't really do anything until I get this decryption password. So I've contacted the seller um, to see if they can get that to me. As soon as I get that back, we should be able to test it out and see if it works. Okay, I received the password back from the seller and I've decrypted the laser source. So let's do a little pulse here on a piece of paper and see if the laser fires. First, I need to open the shutter, enable the laser, then punch a dot. We have a hole. Awesome, it's working. I think I might have mentioned it before in an earlier video, but um, I bought my laser source from a different supplier before I learned about Skyfire, and I could have saved several hundred dollars buying it from them. So yeah, check out their website, and don't forget to use the discount code for 5% off. I'm ready to start cutting my rails for the enclosure. So I have some more 2020 extrusion, and I have some pieces of eighth inch acrylic, Couple different sizes here and here. So let's start preparing this for the upper enclosure and the back doors. Okay, I've dry fit them to make sure they're gonna work. Um, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Um, I have to put these in here so that I can cut down my acrylic on my CO2 laser. Um, otherwise, I don't have the capacity to cut a larger sheet. So uh, these are just for my personal needs. I've got the extrusions cut for the front door. I quickly modeled up these end caps so there's no sharp edges and I'm gonna get those 3D printed. All right, end caps are all done for all my doors. So let me see if I can use a mallet here and pop them into place. Nice, the front door is assembled so now we can get it attached to the machine. All my extrusions are cut for the two back doors. So let me start getting some corner brackets on there and getting these assembled. The two back door panels are assembled. So let's get these installed on the machine. All right, let's try something like that. All right, cool. It's gonna open up like this. I'm trying to figure out how to install these gas struts for the front door. And it looks like I need to put a 90 degree bend in this one bracket here. I've been playing around with the position for these gas shocks. And I think where it is right now, it's pretty good. Let me get this one installed here real quick loosely and we'll see how it feels. Nice, I think that's gonna work well. Cool, let me get those tightened down and then I think we can start cutting out acrylic panels for all this. I ran a quick test and uh, looks like it cut through just fine. So let me get some files loaded up and we'll start cutting these out. Oh, 
here. All right, that looks pretty good to me. Let's do the other side. Since both of those fit nicely, I'm going to go ahead and get a bunch more panels cut out that we're going to need for the top enclosure. Let's start trying to install these panels. Um, I've got some drop-in T-nuts in here, so let's see how big of a pain this is. Um, I would recommend making all these out of metal except for this front door and I would probably use a laser safety glass. Um, I'm using acrylic simply because um, I'm doing this for YouTube and I film, you know, using this machine and cutting. I've got this panel prepared for this front door with drop in T-nuts and you can see I've also got a handle on there lower section. Okay, let's start getting some of these corner brackets installed to support the bottom of this acrylic. I'm removing this e-stop. I found that um, I was able to buy one that's 3 NC so that I can wire up the laser source to it also. So I have a new one here. The e-stop's all wired now. Um, Software is running. So let me press it and make sure everything uh, is registering. Well, good. The laser alarm came on. The software sees that the e-stop's been pressed. And I heard all the motor contactors release. Uh, yep. So cool. Looks like that's gonna work. I have two not to a 120 millimeter fans here. And I've just went ahead and laser cut a piece of eighth inch MDF to temporarily mount them to. They're gonna go right here. They're gonna suck the air out right uh, above and below the servo drives. I figure that's gonna be the hottest spot. And then over on, on this side, I'm going to have two intake ports. I'm going to be using the machine to cut out all these lower panels out of 14 gauge steel. Um, so this will get replaced, but um, you know, they're in position now so I can do the wiring. I think that should move plenty of air out of there. I'm trying to make final preparations before we start cutting. I have some aluminum tape and I'm going around and taping the seams here um, so no dust can escape into the back control panel. I'm also underneath taping up the seams from these uh, bottom plates so to keep any dust from getting down here below. So I'm going to try to seal it all up before we start cutting. Let's go ahead and cut out a couple more panels for the back doors. I've got a sheet of coroplast to make the roof and because of the way the uh, optical cable sticks up the top slightly I uh, jog the machine around and use some painters tape to try to mark where um, I need to have a little clearance. I need to have an air intake port up there anyways for the exhaust system so I'd like to have not such a huge hole but um, I think this will be fine and allow air to come in and keep the smoke from escaping hopefully. I've taken some measurements and I got this cut out of a piece of chloroplast. So let me get this installed up there and we'll see how it fits. It works, but uh, not crazy about it. Having this big hole, this uh, chloroplast, is, it's really drooping in the middle and it looks kind of janky. 
So I think maybe I'm just gonna scrap the whole idea. I have some extra 2020 extrusion that I had to purchase to, to build this enclosure. So I think I might just go ahead and install it up there, put a beam across and maybe a couple down the side. And I have extra uh, acrylic sheets also. So I might as well just uh, use that and let more light in and then it won't droop like this. All right, back to the drawing board. I've got the extrusion installed for the top of the enclosure. And then uh, got all my acrylic panels cut out here for the top and the back. So let's get this installed and get this enclosure finished. The roof's all done. And I think my exhaust should have enough force to keep the air from escaping back there. If not, I'll have to make some kind of temporary cap that I can remove if I need to move the machine. If you have higher ceilings than me, it'd probably be easier just to extend this enclosure up a couple inches and not have to mess with this hole in the back. All right, now I just have to add these two back panels and the acrylic enclosure part should be done. Okay, so all the acrylic panels for the enclosure are done. Um, we're ready to cut out all the lower ones that will be metal. But first I want to get these magnetic catches installed on all the doors. I'm just going to use the magnet side of this and then I've designed some custom plates that will fit nicely on the 2020 extrusion that we're going to laser cut. Here are the six parts. These are gonna make contact with the magnets and I need to bend them uh, 90 degrees. So let me get those bent. I got all six of those bent. So let's get them installed on the machine and see if the door latches work. Let's try that. pretty good. Works really well. They grab pretty good, but I can pull it off. Okay, cool. Let's do the front. All right, let's try that. All right, cool. Looks like it keeps it locked in place. Still really easy to open. Cool, I like it. All right, we're getting really close. Next video, we're gonna actually do some cutting and try to wrap up the machine. So stay tuned for that. Um, thank you to all my Patreons for supporting this project. Thank you guys.